Hey, Stephanie here. Welcome to the Aeroponic Tower channel. So I've been trying to make this video for three days and get my home unit set up and the weather and activities and things just keep getting in the way. So I did a build and I will time lapse that now of this tower, gave it a nice cleaning and now we're going to get it loaded up and I'm going to show you what happens when you neglect your seed starts or your seedlings and these have been growing forever. But one of the things I talk about is to always be starting new seeds and to take advantage of the fact that your seedlings can grow outside of the tower for a pretty significant amount of time. So if we're starting our seeds frequently, instead of putting in seedlings that are little tiny sprouts that can drown and take a really long time, what they'll do is they'll go through a period of shock where they do nothing when they're in the tower, if you put them in too early. Instead of doing that, I could be growing a head of lettuce. I actually have some plants that are mature that are going back in here. And my seedlings can be maturing on the side and getting pretty big. So when they go in the tower, they're just gonna take off. Now I am feeding them nutrients. So they are well fed and they're outside getting the sun. Um, if I do this inside, I keep them under the grow lights, but let's get them in the tower. I will share some of my thoughts on where to plant things. Not a perfect science, but I do have some thoughts on it. And that's it, it's just nice and clean. I also need to add nutrients to this tank. I have decided to build this tower here next to the entrance to our house. So our house sits sideways and I really enjoyed having one here last year. Um, the benefits right now, it's a little shadier this time of day, which is awesome. I had my green stock here. I'm not poo-pooing the green stock, but I don't love it like I do the towers. It's just work. It's like growing in a raised bed. You have to fertilize it. You have to add fresh compost. I have to make sure to water this, which I was not good about. Where the towers, I just have to worry about the tank being full. So I'm gonna move this out to the other side of the property where I have some raised beds where I may not forget it so much and I'm going to put a tower here. So I have so many things that need a home ASAP. So let's get this built. And we need to address one thing too. So I am going to show you guys how I deal with caterpillars. This time of year, 
is caterpillar season. I've gotten some messages from some of you wondering what happened to your food and it was caterpillars. And I can see one right here. And they munch on leaves and do some pretty decent damage. Now the white cabbage worms, the ones from the white moth, those, goes up, those go after your brassicas then they will lay hundreds of eggs that'll hatch and they just decimate your cabbages and kales and things like that. Um, that's not what I'm seeing right now. I'm just seeing more traditional caterpillars. But either way, the treatment, there's another one on here. And these have been on the ground, so I guess there is, there's a third one. So there is a cost to neglecting your food, apparently, because you don't catch the pests. Now, they haven't done very much damage. I'm just seeing a little, but they're out, so we're gonna take care of that as well, so we don't lose our crops. Um, this is the time of the year that in our area, Western North Carolina, we're mid-September. This is when caterpillars become a problem. We have kind of seasonal pests. We're at the end of squash bugs. So my squash plants are actually producing. I put in new seedlings a couple of weeks ago. They're producing amazing squash and we just don't have the pest pressure that we had over the summer. But now we've got the caterpillars. This is an easy fix. You just need to stay on top of it. So these are my seedlings. They're gigantic. Uh, we'll talk about what they are in a few minutes. I actually have a lot more. All right, so I have some of the plants that were originally in here down there. Um, some of the things like peppers, I'm gonna to move to another tower. All the towers need love and attention. We've just been kind of busy and it's that season. But the good news is they're not being overtaken with weeds. I can get the one pest pressure under control on all of them pretty quickly with just one spray. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And they can wait. They can, these towers do really good if they need to just be in a timeout and keep things alive. Um, and I'll walk you guys over to my towers and show you what I'm talking about. They're overgrown. I haven't been consistent with the nutrients because I want to pull things out and they're still doing fine. So I can put the plants, a lot of these things that won't have room in here, into open spots in my other towers. Um, we're going camping, we're going uh, car camping or tent camping for a few days. So I don't have time to deal with those, but I do need to get these seedlings, especially now that I see they're getting some pest pressure being close to the ground or on the ground into towers. So I'm just gonna plop them in anywhere I can find. And then when I have time next week to clean out my towers and give them a nice freshening up, I can move things around to more strategic places because we're going to be growing in the garage over the winter. I need to be mindful of keeping things like peppers, eggplants, and tomatoes on the same towers instead of spread out like I typically do, just so that if we have an early random frost or the weather shifts a little bit cooler than I like, I can move those towers inside, but not have to worry about some of these cool weather crop towers. These can stay outside for a really long time. I've got towers that are gonna be full of broccoli and cauliflower and kales and cabbages and all those amazing things. So that's just one thing to be mindful of. If you are going to transition into indoors and continue growing summer crops, you may want to put them strategically on towers so that you're not having to move all your towers inside if you have one freeze. So let's get this stuff planted. I'm gonna put my nutrients in. It was a spider. All right, so here are the plants that were already in this tower that I wanna keep. Um, my aloe, and it's been out in the sun, and one of the reasons I wanted this tower a little bit more close to the house too, is that the hottest part of the day, 
Uh, the sun's behind the house in their shade because some of my aloe have been turning a little bit brown. When they lose their color like this, it's because they're getting too much sun. So I'm going to see if we can't salvage those. They tend to green up pretty quickly. There's some turnips in here. There are some onions, some beets, arugula. There is a pepper plant, but I'm going to move that to a different tower. So let's put all the original things in and then we'll get to work on the baby green section and wherever else. I don't know where I'm going to put things yet. I don't have any Swiss chard. So I am going to let this one get big. These are actually regular bulbing onions. Oh, the tower's getting big. So I'm just gonna alternate these. That one has a spinach. I don't know where the spinach came from. And it just, it just rained. And this one is getting a new root. It lost the original roots, they fell off. But I see a new root growing, so that's a good sign. Don't give up if it looks rough. When you transplant things like this, they have a healing time. They take a minute to accept their new conditions and kind of acclimate. And this right here is why I love this method of gardening so much. It's just so easy and simple and peaceful. And listening to the water just in the background of this video reminds me that calming effect it produces when you're gardening and harvesting your food. And even, even in the hard times of having to clean up the towers, it's still just a lot less work and so enjoyable. And these towers are, these plants are more of a hot mess than I've ever let my seedlings get. But here you can see there's new roots. That's what these are. These are brand new. So it is acclimating. So if you, you know, have a season where things just aren't perfect, it's okay. I actually got started on this tower and then it started raining. So I went to the gym in town and we're going to get it done now. Actually, I'm going to stick all of these in the front just because of the way the sun, this back of the tower, ah, lost my rock wool in there. The back of the tower is going to get less sun. Oops. So I can always move these. <laughs> this is not going well. Okay. 
I'm gonna add extra rock wool so that it's tight. And we're gonna stick these up here so they get lots of sun. There we go. Yay. Okay, and I do talk a lot about the top of your tower gets the most sun, so the things on the top thrive really well. So that in mind, what else do we want to put on the top? Let's see here. I am going to do, so this is an Amoco cabbage. It's a Napa cabbage. It gets pretty big, but it grows well in the baby green section of the towers. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of these up top. There's a caterpillar on this one. We're gonna remove him. So this grows up. So what I think I'll do is intermingled with these cabbage. I'm gonna do some of my bulbing onion because they're not gonna get very big and full. So something thin and tall is a good companion next to something kind of bushy. So let's do one on each side. And then I think I'll do the same right here. This is just a standard bulbing onion that you would buy at the grocery store. Some of this food I'll be eating in like two weeks because it's so big already. Lettuce, I want some really good lettuce. So I'm gonna put these at the top. Lettuce can get a little bit um, lanky if it doesn't have enough sun. So we have more of the Imoco. And these will perk back up. They're a little leggy because they weren't in the tower, but they will be fine. Once they start to get sun, they'll be upright in a couple of days. All right, we have some butter lettuce and some um, oak leaf salanova. So I'm gonna continue to put these up top we can get some really good lettuce. And I love the baby green section because of this. I can grow so much food. These are a couple of my favorite foods. I'll go through these really quickly. There's a Japanese beetle on this one. Um, so these are Mabuna, which is in the Mizuna family or the mustard family. I think it's in the Brassica family. And then we have Chai Jai Maisai, which is a bok choy, very, very healthy. And these will be for my juicing. If I wanted to eat them as baby greens. You eat them about this size. So technically I can harvest these and make a salad. Look at that caterpillar. What is going on with the caterpillars? They are for real out. I guess it's because these were on the ground. Because I've never had to deal with caterpillars like that. They don't climb the tower. Well, I shouldn't say that. I usually deal with the white moth caterpillars on my towers, not these random ones. And I don't see those on my plants. I haven't looked really closely. I did see a little bit of damage, so I'm gonna spray everything, but it's just interesting, I guess, because they were on the ground. So Chai Jai Maisai and Mizuna, Mabuna. And Mabuna, you can cut and eat the greens like this size, those baby greens, let them grow back one time. These are heavily seeded. I'm going to let these get much, much larger and use them for my juicing. The Chai Jai Maisai, I let it get pretty big, and that's just a meal for us. It's a bok choy.
Let's see what else we have. I have so many starts. I'm, I'm really behind on my powers. Here's some more Chai Jai Mai Sai. This is Chai Jai Mai Sai and arugula. And another caterpillar. All right, I want some lettuce. Let me focus on what we want to put in here. sad lavender that I want to try and salvage. We're going to put, I'm going to actually put this in a sunnier spot and get some clips. Okay, I went and grabbed these clips. These clips are really nice. They clip onto the side. Um, they're going to last forever, essentially, versus like the net pots break down. They're not great for large plants, so it needs to be something like a cabbage, bok choy or a lettuce if you're gonna use these. But I'm gonna use a few of these because a lot of my net pots have plants in them that I need the roots to dissolve a little bit before I can get them out. And lettuce, we're gonna be able to harvest really quickly. And I have new starts coming. So we're just gonna focus on Giving these lettuce a good home. This is a gorgeous lettuce. And the reason I decided to put the lettuce in the standard grow ports it's because when lettuce has room to breathe and get enough sun, it turns into gorgeous, um, really robust heads of lettuce. Sometimes when it's crowded, it can just stay a little bit smaller and leggier. And this food will grow super fast. I'll be harvesting this lettuce in three, four weeks, five at mm. the most. So this will be a quick turnaround of just delicious produce on the bottom here. And then we can That's maybe a move into something else. Sai and a lettuce. Got carried away with that one. All right, so we have. And what I'm doing is just left. going through all these starts and looking for the ones that look like they need to go into the tower the quickest because I'm going to be out of town doing some camping for a while. So I need to make sure I get the most dire ones into the towers. Um, the rest can just sit out and wait. All right, I'm going to put the rest of these onions in because it just makes it easier sometimes when a lot of the same things are on one tower. It helps my brain to babysit them a little better. These are super tiny. I'm going to give those time. All right, and here we have some turnips. These are, looks like some kale. And this tower holds 64 plants. Some That's beets. why this is taking a bit of a time. And also why I start so many seedlings because I've got a lot of these baby green extension kits on my towers. Um, and they just really increase the amount you can grow. So with the extension kit and then this home unit comes with 16 baby green grow ports, it adds up to 64 spots we can grow food. 
which is a lot of food. Three more spots. Let's see. I have one on the bottom. What do I want as the shining star? I'm gonna put this lettuce. These are all beat up, but don't let that fool you. They will be fine. They will come back. And they'll come back very quickly because they're ready to be planted. Oh, and a beet. I definitely want the beets in here. All right, one more, one more, right? Two more spots. We got two more baby green spots. Next to beets, I think I'm gonna go with some, the Chai Jai Mai Sai. Um, the arugula can hold off a little bit. But some of these could really use a home. So let's put this one in here. And this one. Huh. Okay, so I still have so many starts and not any time to clean my towers to put these in, but that's okay. I'm gonna get these organized and give them space. I'm going to water them with nutrient water really, really well. They will be fine while we're out of town. And the tower looks droopy, but I will show you guys when I come back in town, this will have perked up and everything will be thriving. That's the cool thing about these towers. And seedlings, when they're larger like this and they're ready to go into the tower, they really get established very quickly. Um, so let's deal with the caterpillar issue and I will show you guys how to manage caterpillars. I like to do this as a preventative typically. So if I know it's caterpillar season or I'm going out of town or we're just going to be busy, I will put a preventative spray on and that keeps them under control for at least a week, sometimes two. So it lasts a while. That, that'll kind of depend on how much rain you get in your area. We get a lot of rain. It's actually about to rain again. But it, it seems like about a week for me is fine. And I just spray a light misting. And over the summer, I only had to do it once every month. And I would spray over the top of the tower and just let it kind of rain down. And that really kept the white moth caterpillars under control for me. Um, I don't know if they just didn't like to lay their eggs there because they could smell the bacteria. It's a bacteria I'm using that causes their stomachs to have issues and they die. And I don't know if that was it, but whatever it was, it really worked. So I'm gonna show you guys what that is now. Okay, so what we're gonna use is thuricide. Um, I think it's also called BT. It's supposed to be safe for humans. It's like a biological that doesn't harm bugs and animals, but does cause the caterpillar to have real big problems. Um, I try to not use anything, but if it's a matter of having food, and not having food, I'm going to do something in order to make sure we have food. That's kind of my thoughts on that because otherwise I'm buying that food on the grocery store and at the grocery store, it's way more contaminated, contaminated with way many more things and a head of cabbage cost me 45 cents to grow here and what is it at the store now? It's unbelievable what the prices are. Like bok choy is $5. So I'm definitely willing to intervene if I have to. The only time I really have to put any particular product on my towers is with caterpillars. They seem to be the only pest I can't manage just by washing them off or hand picking them off. These particular caterpillars I could because these are just caterpillars. They're just regular caterpillars that found my garden. Um, if it is the yellow moth ones, that's a different story. Those are so invasive and they hatch when they're super, super tiny. But a friend was asking me what happened to her squash and when she took them out because her squash plants died while she was out of town, she found caterpillars had crawled inside her squash plants and killed them. This would have stopped it had she sp sprayed her towers before she left town because when they take a bite to go into the plant, it would have caused them to get an upset stomach and die before they had time to do all that damage. So 
This is the one thing, um, the label is ripped off, so I'll put a link below. I like to buy things in bulk, I've mentioned that many times. So we're gonna mix this up. I mix this like I mix my tower minerals. Don't be like me. But I, and I've questioned whether showing you guys how I add my minerals, if I should do that, or if I should make it more scientific and be more precise, but I don't wanna not be true and make it look like I'm doing everything perfect when the way I filled that tank is how I fill my tanks. Right now I'm filling my tanks, a couple of them once a week because they have so many fruiting things on them like tomatoes. Others about every two weeks. If it's new like this, it's maybe more like every three weeks to a month, but that's how I fill them up. It just works for me. I don't know. I know some people can't do that and have to be a little bit more precise. For me, that works. So this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna shake it up. Do shake this up. I have opened this and poured it in and it's not mixed before. This is a 16 ounce bottle, so I don't know. A couple tablespoons. I make it pretty strong because I don't like to spray a lot. Uh, I like to just kind of do one little misting, so I feel like if it's stronger, it's doing more work. Who knows if that's true. I'm gonna fill this up with water. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm going to wash this tower off because I got a little bit dirty and I don't want it to be dirty because it looks so clean. And then I'll put my spray on and then we're done. I'll take you guys on a tour to see the hot mess that is the rest of my tower. Show you what real... We look beautiful again. We have our spray. Probably way more concentrated than it should be. But, oh well. Okay, that's it. When I did this over the summer, I would just do, you know, my plants were gigantic over the summer. I would do it over the top like this. And that did the trick. If you see them and they're the baby ones, you wanna go underneath the leaves and spray those. All right, so let's go spray the other towers. I'm gonna to organize all these babies and straighten them up a little bit. I will put them in a safe space so they will stay alive while we're camping. And I'll give you guys a tour of the hot mess towers. Okay, so this is my newest tower. I've already harvested off of this about six times for salads and replace them growing super fast. I'm gonna harvest all this arugula to take on our camping trip. This has lemon balm, herbs, doing really well. I got this one all cleaned up. This is my peas. So this one is fine. Look at how gigantic the basil got. Can you see up here? Mm -hmm. Up here, because it's getting so much sun, the basil is just taking off and it's doing great. Over here, this one was my winter squash. I just pulled it out. This tank needs to be cleaned. It needs new water, new minerals, but there's still some things that are doing well on here. So I've got this patio baby that's still fruiting. So I wanna keep that going. I've got leeks up here that are doing well. A couple of sets of leeks. Uh, there's a pepper plant up here. Eggplant on the back. I put that lavender in here, a very sad looking cucumber. So I don't wanna lose this. So I'm gonna get some water and nutrients in here and we will just have to clean this one when we get back. Um, I may stick some starts in this one just as a temporary holding spot because we have so many. We will see. Over here. Over here, this is kind of the same situation as that one. I need to clean it out, but I haven't had a whole lot of time. But this one still has lots of jalapeno peppers. So I took out the tomatoes today to give the cucumbers more space because those are more important to me than the tomatoes right now. I've got gorgeous eggplant. So I'm just kind of taking out what I can, adding things in and buying us some time. There's some new starts here. Buying us a little time um, before I can really dive in and get these cleaned up. But they're still doing great and that's the advantage with these towers. This is a eggplant that I put in here. This will be something that feeds us over the winter. So this tower, because it's peppers and I have a young eggplant, this is one I'm gonna wanna start putting tomatoes in. And we actually may do that right now. Hold that thought. So I have some dwarf tomatoes. These are what I'm gonna be growing 
this winter indoors and they've been off to a great start. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put them in here just as a temporary holding spot and then maybe move them to, no. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put them in here since like I mentioned, I wanna keep some of this summer food together in the same tower. That way when I move them inside, they are all about the same type of food if I need to move them in early. So I need some grow cages. And again, I would love to clean this and make it look pretty like this one right here. But I can't do that right now. So we're just gonna keep moving forward and we can always do that later. So let's put this one in. And then this one's really ready to take off too. And all my tomatoes started except for one variety Two, two varieties didn't seed. So I gotta figure out which ones those are. All right, let's head to another tower. Oh, wait, yep. Okay, let's head to another tower. This tower, I've been doing the same thing. I've been planting new things while the old ones are still producing, I took out some tomatoes and did some turnips and just look at all that food in here. I always say do one turnip seed and I did many this time and actually it's doing really well. So this just gives us food. There's a turnip down here. There's one right here. Uh, while these are still producing before I can clean them, this basil's going to seed so I'm gonna harvest some of it. It just allows me to keep growing until I can get these under control. Looks like I put some baby kale up the top here. We're gonna make pesto for our camping trip with this. I could use my hori hori knife right now. Okay, let's go over here. Along this side, the peppers are out of control. I'll be harvesting those tomorrow to take on our trip. There's still a tomato down here, but all the tomatoes need to come out. This tower, This tower, same thing, messy, needs to be deep cleaned. I went ahead and put my cauliflower up top. This is the purple of Sicily. And we just have all these peppers. I mean, look at these gorgeous, dark black peppers. I have a couple of those. Come zoom in on this. These gorgeous dark black peppers. Jalapenos, there's a squash on the bottom. The squash do have a little bit of powdery mildew, so I'm gonna actually treat those with my special formula tonight. And I'm gonna thin them out. So this tower over here is a triple hot mess. Uh, we've got basil going to seed. I probably won't even try to salvage that. At this, this will all just go to the chickens because I have so much basil. The kale is absolutely incredible. Uh, there's parsley in here. My calendula is doing amazing. There's a tomato plant that's still pretty healthy in here. And then my squash, I planted these a couple about a month ago. And these do have some powdery mildew, so I need to thin them out and spray that. But I harvested a huge yellow squash off of this one. There's another one on that. So jalapenos, peppers, tomatoes, giant kale. This is what a neglected tower does. A neglected garden gets weeds and gets crazy. A neglected tower turns into a food forest jungle. And then this sad one over here. This is the tomatoes. They're done. Ooh, there's still some really nice ones on here. So I will go do a harvest of those to take with us on our trip. Um, I'm gonna harvest this kale and make a kale salad. The rest, there's an eggplant on here. I harvested everything off of that. This whole thing needs to be wiped out and started over. So when I get back in town, I'll do that and that'll give me a home for all those tomatoes and things too. So I'm gonna find a place to put these because that's it. Thanks for taking a tour with me, guys. I wanna always be real and show you the messy side of things. So as we transition, oh, look at that. Zoom in on that. Isn't that gorgeous? So as, so 
So there's still amazing, gorgeous food. It's because it's cooling off and kale likes it cool. It changes the flavor of kale too. So I'll definitely be taking that with this camping. But I just want to show you, like, even when they're a hot mess, just keep pushing forward because you can always clean them and take them apart when they have plants in them. That's totally doable. So just keep moving forward. If it gets messy, just take it one plant at a time. That's what I'm doing, taking it one tower, one plant at a time to get this back under control. And in the meantime, look at all this food. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you on the next video.